Wow, I hope that video excites you as much as it excites me. I'm pumped for the future of Virginia Tech. Let's go! Hokies! Let's go! Hokies! Good afternoon and welcome to the 2017 State of the University Address. My name is Shea Yolushina. I'm a senior studying human nutrition, food, and exercise. And this year I have the honor of serving as the undergraduate representative to the Virginia Tech Board of Visitors. And my name is Brett Netto. I'm a PhD candidate in planning, governance, and globalization, focusing on international relations theory. I serve as the graduate student rep to the Board of Visitors this year. How about we give it up for that phenomenal performance by the Virginia Tech Chamber Singers. Again, thank you all for being here this afternoon. Please join me in welcoming the 16th president of Virginia Tech, Dr. Tim Sands. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Shay. Thank you, Shay and Brett. Good afternoon, and what about Brett's shoes? Uh, th those are something else. All right. And Thanks, Shay, for getting us warmed up with Go Hokies. I'm pleased to uh, join you here this afternoon, and my, my, my wife, Laura, and uh, my son, KC, are here as well. I wanted to call out my son. I can't help it. I'm a proud father. He passed uh, the Illinois, Illinois bar today, or at least he found out about it. So, uh, <laughs> and welcome to, to just an ordinary day in Blacksburg. When we chose this date, we thought it would be a nice, quiet Friday afternoon, just kind of ease into the weekend, but uh, what, a, what great fun it is. Being on a college campus, especially Virginia Tech, is just an amazing feeling, and I'm thankful for it every day. The energy is incredible. Our students, our faculty, our staff, and our alumni are just uh, amazing people, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them today. Um, we also have ESPN outside besides this show here. Uh, we have Jimmy Kimmel, I understand, is um, on campus doing some shooting. So it's a great day to be, at, be a Hokie. And thank you for spending time with us this uh, afternoon in the Moss Arts Center. Every time I look up at this theater, I, I'm reminded of the beauty of the intersection of art, engineering, and design, and don't forget natural resources. It's just an amazing venue. I also want to welcome our remote audiences in Roanoke, the national capital region, and certainly on the web. A special welcome to our Alumni Board of Directors, our College of Engineering Committee of 100, and the Alumni Advisory Council. So thank you for joining us today. <laughs> this afternoon, I'd like to take a few minutes to celebrate our successes over the past year and to share my perspectives on the opportunities and challenges ahead as we strive to become a leading global university in the spirit of the engaged land-grant university that we are today. Before I get into all that, though, I want to welcome everyone who is here for the first time. Please welcome our new students, faculty, and staff. If you could wave or stand or whatever you'd like. <laughs> Members of our Board of Visitors are here today as well. Would you please stand as I call your name? C.T. Hill. There you are, C.T. Thanks for joining us. Anna James. Where are Anna? And thanks again to uh, Shay and Brett, our undergraduate and graduate student reps. Uh, and also, uh, I'd like to welcome our faculty representative, Dr. Hans Robinson. Hans, and our, there he is. Thank you. and our staff representative, Robert Seebeck. Thank you, Robert. We have new leaders who have either joined us recently or will be joining us soon, so it's an opportunity to introduce them. Uh, in less than two weeks, we'll be welcoming Richard Blythe, Dean of the College of Architecture and Urban Studies, who will be joining us from RMIT University School of Architecture and Design in Melbourne, Australia. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Julia Ross, Dean of the College of Engineering. Julia? And our new Vice President for Enrollment Management, Louisa Havens. Louisa. And 
and someone you all know here, but uh, I'd like to recognize Rosemary Bliesner, who is taking the role of Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. Rosemary. I wish I could individually recognize everyone who has uh, made our success possible. To each and every one of you, thank you for all that you've done and all that you will do in the future to continue to make Virginia Tech the best comprehensive land-grant research university in the world. It's your de devotion to this institution, your talents, your compassion that have made Virginia Tech strong and resilient. This strength is evident in our principles of community, and it's what will get, th get us through the challenging year ahead. And while I won't stop here to uh, list the issues and controversies that characterize this time in our nation and at our institution, I will observe that we will come through stronger, and each challenge will represent an opportunity to listen and to educate and to lead the way forward by example. I want to take a moment to recognize some of the individuals whose leadership has moved the needle in several important areas for Virginia Tech. Leaders such as Minna Pratt-Clark, Vice President for Strategic Affairs and Vice Provost for Inclusion and Diversity. Minna couldn't be here with us today, but I wanted to take this moment to recognize her work. She's been instrumental in our recognition as a diversity champion by Insight into Diversity for a second year in a row. With her, yes, I think that's her. <laughs> With her guidance, we are welcoming 15 new underrepresented faculty to Virginia Tech this year, and that's the most ever by a long shot. She brought Explore VT and uh, the Black College Institute to Virginia Tech this year, and Inclusive VT's Project 2022 was off to a great start, setting ambitious milestones for our institution regarding race, gender, and economic diversity. We are committed, there's no question about that. We have momentum, but we must not let up. Inclusion and diversity are, are really core to our role as an engine for social and economic mobility, for attracting talent from the broadest pools possible and for assuring that all of our students have on-campus experiences that prepare them for the world that they're about to enter. Inclusive VT is our institutional and individual commitment to prosum in the spirit of community, diversity, and excellence. Let me also call out Charlie Flager. Charlie, uh, Charlie's here today. Charlie's our Vice President for Advancement. He joined us two years ago. He's an alumnus, actually a double hokey, and uh, he is leading us forward with advancement for the university. In fact, this is our second year of record fundraising with $162 million in new gifts and commitments. This is more than twice what we raised two years ago. We just announced a record $15 million scholarship donation from the Clark Foundation for high-achieving, underserved, and underrepresented students. I'm also proud that our student leader, leaders believe in our vision enough, that our leaders in general believe in our vision enough to support it personally. This year, 100% of the members of the President's Council, these are the deans, the vice presidents, and the institute directors, made financial contributions to the university. Thank you, President's Council. This is a great start, but we have a long way to go and so much more work to do. And while our advancement team is uh, building relationships, it's the vision of what Virginia Tech could become that is driving the commitment that our friends and alumni are demonstrating. So thank you all for chipping in and for being part of the future of Virginia Tech. <laughs> together with our faculty, together with our faculty, they have launched Virginia Tech is dedicated to our principles of community and free speech. These are tough issues, not the time to discuss them here, but I appreciate your perspective.
<laughs> well, thank you. I share your perspective, but this is not the time to talk about it. It is, a, it is a, an issue, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a situation in our country and at Virginia Tech and every institution around the country that is challenging our, our principles and putting our principles in, in conflict with each other. And uh, as I mentioned a little earlier in this uh, presentation, I'm confident that the strength of our community, that our principles of community uh, will win out in the day. I think everyone at Virginia Tech just has to respect each other and treat each other like they would treat anybody that they would want to be treated. And we'll get through this and we'll learn and we'll grow as an institution. And I have to say, I love the fact that our students speak up, that they have a voice, and that they're willing to have that conversation. We'll do it. Thank you. Um, but I think, that, um, I think that this is going to be a theme for this year, and I'm looking forward to, as I said earlier, learning from it. And learning from our students as well. That happens every day. At the very beginning of the talk, I mentioned that uh, it's great to be on a college campus because you hear this diversity of ideas. You hear uh, the different generations and their perspectives and the different parts of the U.S. represented. And I can tell you, if you're not, uh, most of you are around college campuses or you wouldn't be here, but if you're not, you're missing out on a very vigorous and interesting uh, time in this nation's history. Uh, let me uh, thank also, I was thanking some of our leaders. I'd like to thank our Provost Thanasis Rakakis for his tireless work in collaboration with our deans and institute directors to advance our academic enterprise in alignment with the Beyond Boundaries vision. Together with our faculty, they have launched five destination areas, the adaptive brain and behavior, data and decision sciences, global system sciences, integrated security, and intelligent infrastructure for human-centered communities. Our destination areas connect our strengths across broad themes so that we can become a destination for top talent and partners in the Commonwealth the nation and around the world. They build on the interdisciplinary research tradition of our successful institutes and centers, allowing for richer and ever more impactful opportunities for our students and our faculty. They're designed to build that dynamic cross-cutting layer that will define the Virginia Tech of the future. And each destination area traverses the disciplines encompassing all three mission areas of the university, including teaching and learning, at the graduate, professional, and undergraduate levels. Together, they form a network of strengths that allows us to quickly respond to emerging complex problems anywhere in the globe. To give you a sampling of new undergraduate courses this fall that our faculty are offering under the destination areas, under intelligent infrastructure and human-centered communities, we have a course called The Future Is Now, Reinventing Community in the 21st Century. And under data analytics and decision sciences, we have offered Introduction to Data in the Social Context. And also under DND, we have a course called Data in Our Lives, Critical Thinking with Data. It's courses like these that really open a window to the world our students will lead in the future. Our destinations areas also require first class facilities and resources, and our alumni and friends are really stepping up. We're about to begin construction on buildings that will focus on intelligent infrastructure and construction thanks to the generosity of John Lawson, Russell and Brett Hitt, and other industry professionals who see our vision's potential. Speaking of alumni and friends, this has been a very good year for connecting and reconnecting. We were honored to have two outstanding technology leaders speak at spring commencement. Engineering alumna Regina Dugan, the former head of DARPA, who now leads technology development at Facebook, and Facebook Chief Operating Officer Cheryl Sandberg. We're also privileged to have one of the honorees from our spring 2016 commencement with us today. Irving Pedru is an alumnus and a great friend to the university. He was the first African-American student to attend Virginia Tech. Mr. Pedru, welcome and thank you for being here. Where are you, Mr.
We need to expand our outreach to alumni and friends, especially our alumni. They know better than anyone how our Virginia Tech education can improve lives. We have some of the most loyal alumni in the country, but only 12% support the university financially. Although that's up from 9% two years ago, it's low compared to our peers. In our vision for the future, private support is vital. That's why we need to achieve 22% alumni giving by 2022. What a great way that will be to celebrate our 150th anniversary. There are many reasons to be excited about Virginia Tech in 2017. Freshman applications are on the rise. We've set records each of the last three years. This is really because we're getting the word out about what a value Virginia Tech is. The outcomes for our graduates are outstanding, and we're offering degrees and student experiences that are tailored for this century. For example, we're leading Virginia in STEM health graduates with 24% of the total for the state. The record interest has yielded a record entering class a little bit bigger than we expected. We're near the top of every ranking that focuses on value. For example, this past uh, July, money ranked Virginia Tech number 23 in best colleges for your money of all public and private institutions in the US. This ranking was based on quality, affordability, and alumni success. We are also near the top when it comes to broader outcomes and student experience. Earlier this month, Niche ranked Virginia Tech number five out of 666 public universities in America and number one among the public land-grant universities. We were number two, of course, in campus food. Should be number one, but we're always up there. Number three for the Blacksburg campus out of more than 1,300 universities. Princeton Review ranked Virginia Tech number one in the category of students love their school. Number one in the country. You don't get number one rankings in a category like that without a lot of hard work. Vice President for Student Affairs, Patty Perillo, and her DSA coll colleagues do a, an incredible job. Patty, thank you. Virginia Tech is all about prosum. That's the foundation of our university. And we're pleased that in Washington Monthly's public good ranking of universities, we made the top 10 among public universities and the top 20 overall, our highest ranking ever by that publication. And in the traditional rankings of US News and World Report, Virginia Tech this year, a couple of weeks ago, made the top 25 publics again, tied for our highest ranking ever. Finally, a number of our academic programs achieved top 10 recognition this year. And please bear with me, it's a long list and getting longer. Our undergraduate architecture program is ranked number four in the US by design intelligence. Our hospitality and tourism management program in the Pamplin College of Business is ranked number eight in the world by the academic rankings of world universities and number six in the world by QS. Aerospace engineering is number 10 in the world as told by academic rankings of world universities. And we've been ranked number one in the US for the past three years by USA Today College in the category of natural resources and conservation. And congratulations to Dean Winnestorfer and CNRE for that ranking, but also for crossing a 25-year milestone. U.S. News has ranked undergraduate programs in biological, agricultural engineering, civil engineering, and industrial manufacturing engineering in the top 10. And U.S. News has also ranked our graduate programs in civil, environmental, and industrial and systems engineering in the top 10. Our Management Information Technology Online Master's program is number two in the U.S. And our Evening MBA program in the National Capital Region is number seven. I really appreciate Dean Robert Simacras and his Pamplin faculty for leading Virginia Tech to the top tier of these business rankings. Congratulations, Pamplin. Oh, and I guess if we, uh, or when we win tomorrow night, there'll be another program that's in the top 10, but that's, that's another story. By working across boundaries, we're continuing in the words of Coach Buzz Williams to hashtag get better. The Virginia Tech learning experience can lead you to unexpected places. Ella Rack could have done many things after she graduated with degrees in dairy science and animal and poultry science this past spring, including attending our vet med school where she was admitted. She chose a different path though, taking her hokey spirit all the way to Cameroon with the Peace Corps. She sent us these photos from a village in Cameroon a couple of hours ago, 
Hopefully they'll pop up, there they are, showing her group and some of the tools that she's been using in her work there. This is just a couple hours ago. Before she left, and we had hoped to do this live, uh, but there was no way to make it happen today, but before she left, I had a chance to uh, talk to her and I asked her what led her to forego the vet med opportunity and dedicate two and a half years to service. So we have a little video here of Ella. Hi, I am Ella Rock. I am a 2017 graduate of the Virginia Tech College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. I am in Cameroon right now as a agriculture volunteer with the United States Peace Corps. When I came to Virginia Tech, I was on a very narrow path to go become an equine veterinarian and didn't really consider many other opportunities. And being at Virginia Tech and being a dairy science major and having the opportunity to take courses outside of my designated um, trajectory have really shown me that there's different ways that you can apply what you know and what you care about um, that you didn't even know existed in the first place. The Oop motto at Virginia Tech has really shaped me into an individual um, that looks for opportunities to serve my community with the, with the education that I've been presented with. Uh, so rather than going and seeing one path with a very specific career and a very specific direction, uh, the Oopros and Motto has kind of showed me how many different ways that we can apply our passions and apply our um, plans to our great, to help our greater community. Well, thank you, Ella. Look forward to hearing more as you, your adventure moves on. One of our cadets, Gregory House, also hopes to use his knowledge to help people in disadvantaged nations. He's currently working with Dr. Mark Edwards, leading a project to make sure that tap water is safe in homes that were hit by hurricanes and flooding in Texas and Florida. And this past summer, Cadet jo uh, Jacob Sublime spent a month in Poland working with their Air Force Academy and training with a multinational brigade. He's working toward a career in military intelligence. General Fullhart, these are just two examples of the remarkable individuals who make up our Corps cadets and the unique experiences the Corps offers. Thank you for your leadership and thank you to the Corps for representing the heritage of honor and service every day. And congratulations on the spectacular transformation of the Upper Quad, just in time for ESPN Game Day, <laughs> including the new, new location of our first student, Addison Caldwell. <laughs> I've been very, very proud as well of our student athletes over the past few years. This is not just because they're winners. Over the summer, 11 student athletes traveled to Rwanda to work with school children there, and I got to hear some of their stories, amazing. There are many more examples of character and service, and I, I wish I had the time to go through them all. But one of the reasons that our student athletes excel is they have great leadership. I'd like to acknowledge the work that Whit Babcock is doing with uh, the student athlete experience. Thank you, Whit. And welcome to some new leaders in athletics. We have Coach John Sheff in baseball, uh, Coach Tony Roby wrestling, and Coach Jill Lytle Wilson volleyball. So congratulations, by the way, to Coach uh, Wilson for uh, the first ACC win, happened to be over UVA. So congratulations. <laughs> We appreciate all of our coaches, and speaking of great coaches, Coach Fuente and his team have really been bringing out the lunch pail this season, haven't they? So, <clears throat> and welcome to ESPN Game Day, which is, as you all know, uh, setting up outside an alumni mall behind Addison Caldwell and their live for the live broadcast tomorrow. That should be amazing. In a nutshell, the lunch pail philosophy is what envisioning Virginia Tech Beyond Boundaries is about focusing on our strengths and working hard to continuously get better. Beyond Boundaries began in 2015 as an opportunity to envision Virginia Tech 30 years from today as a top 100 global university and a leading engaged institution in the spirit of the land-grant university. We have defined now that North Star and we're now focusing on defining a trajectory to get to that Virginia Tech of the future, taking our first steps toward that vision. We have developed a framework for the future. 
First among the Beyond Boundaries themes is the VT-shaped student experience. Virginia Tech is already known for disciplinary depth and interdisciplinary thinking and a purpose-driven experiential learning. So let's make sure that every student has access to a VT-shaped student experience. Every student should have the opportunity to, to learn in a multidisciplinary team with people whose lived experience and expertise are different than their own. Each student brings their disciplinary knowledge to the table, and everyone learns to communicate across differences. You know, we know that employers want to recruit students who have these skills. I hear this every time I talk to the CEOs of the big firms, especially, that recruit our students. And I believe we do this well already. But eventually, the cross of the T needs to be designed into the experience of every Virginia Tech student. The V that supports the T represents purpose-driven experiential learning. We know that real-world stakes reinforce traditional learning. Again, I think this is a strength already of Virginia Tech. Cooperative education, undergraduate research, our investment teams, athletics, the core, and the many student competitions, they all provide these, these experiences. But we need to embed these opportunities into each student's experience. That means rethinking the transcript, the academic calendar, and certainly the campus of the future. And we'll do all of this with the leverage of technology. If the student experience is to become VT-shaped, the university itself must also be VT-shaped. The future of Virginia Tech will balance disciplinary strength with transdisciplinary programs that embrace complex problems from, for the, from the perspective of improving the human condition. And that's something we've been emphasizing in everything we discuss when we think about the future. Start with the human condition and work backwards from there. We will be inclusive, interconnected, and agile, able to respond to global needs and opportunities. The world will be our campus, and our students, faculty, and partners will co-locate to where the action is, in living laboratories across the Commonwealth and anywhere in the world, maximizing our societal impact. That's the Beyond Boundaries vision in a nutshell. It's ambitious, but now that we can see it, we're moving towards it. This academic year, I've asked Minna Pratt Clark, in a role as Vice President for Strategic Affairs, to engage the university and our community in the development of a plan and a continuous planning process for Beyond Boundaries. We will establish goals, metrics, and milestones. We will first identify what we think will not change in the next 30 years, and then we will innovate right up to the edge of that core. Although this academic year will focus on planning, we already have much underway. We are growing our campus to achieve critical mass. We are smaller than leading comprehensive land-grant universities, and that means many of our programs are too small to be strong in all three mission areas of discovery, learning, and engagement. The growth will be strategic, not uniform. One element of growth is already apparent to everyone around here, growing from about 25,000 undergraduates in 2015 to about 30,000 in 2023. This will not happen all in Blacksburg. We plan for some of that growth to take place in Roanoke and the National Capital Region. As is evident to everyone, we are extraordinarily successful at yielding first-time students for the class of 2021. But we will have more moderate growth in the future uh, to ensure that Virginia Tech maintains a small campus feel with all the advantages of scale. Our emerging master plan features several new residence halls, student centers, dining facilities, and of course, parking structures. <laughs> faculty will grow in number as well. We have identified over 400 new faculty positions in our five destination areas and four strategic growth areas to be filled over the next eight years. And that's in addition to an estimated 500 disciplinary hires in the colleges. This is also the first year in our transition toward our partnership for an incentive-based budget, a new approach to budgeting designed to incentivize and reward the achievements and aspirations of academic units. And as you know, we're accelerating inclusive VT. Our growth provides an opportunity to make a big move toward a more diverse and inclusive university community, a community that maximizes the individual's potential for personal growth and a collective opportunity for academic excellence and impact. We are making progress. This year, about 30% of our entering class is from underrepresented or underserved groups, including underrepresented minority, low income, 
and, and first-generation college students. This is up from about 25% a few years ago and on our way to 40% by 2022. Our land-grant mission is to be an engine of upward mobility, and we plan to get back to those roots. Part of the fuel for achieving this vision is philanthropy. We welcome more than 130 Beyond Boundaries scholars to campus this fall. Thank you to those of you who contributed. Another element that's underway, this past year we created a business engagement center known as LINK under the direction of Brandy Salmon. LINK will lower barriers for comprehensive partnerships, including joint research and innovation, student internships, and philanthropy. This holistic one-stop shop approach is reflected in the partnership between the Office of Research and Innovation, led by Vice President Teresa Mayer, and advancement by Associate Vice President of Development, Mike Moyer. Our vision will require that we grow and expand the use of our campuses across Virginia. Over, over the summer, it was exciting to watch the gateway, our new gateway to campus, taking shape on Route 460. It'll also be exciting to see the traffic light at Southgate go away. <laughs> yeah, that's worth applause here. And ducks won't be the only thing flying near our duck pond with the construction of one of the largest drone facilities of its kind in the country which will be, enable some amazing research that we're, is already underway. Next month, we'll, next month, we'll be breaking ground on the expansion in Roanoke and the next phase of our health sciences and technology campus. Now, speaking of partners, Carilion Clinic has been the best of partners for the past decade, and we look forward to the next phase of our relationship. We've got a great group watching us today at the Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine and Research Institute. Are you all excited about what's happening in Rome? I'd like to call out in the front row here, Nancy Agee, the CEO of Carilion Clinic. She's been a wonderful partner for me and for the rest of us. Nancy, and of course, See a lot of our friends I could introduce here, but I want to also point out Mike Friedlander, who is also in the front row. That's not Mike. There he is. Mike is the founding director of the Research Institute and vice president for health science and technology, and he's doing an outstanding job. So congratulations and thank you, Mike. The research that's happening in Roanoke is important not only because it elevates the university and our partnership with Carilion Clinic but because it has the potential to change people's lives. And if we can make this link work, we've got Dr. Deb Kelly, a faculty member of Virginia Tech Carilion and in the Department of Biological Sciences. She's one of those scientists and she's uh, hopefully gonna join us. There she is, all right. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Hi Tim, welcome to the Kelly Lab. How are you this afternoon? I'm doing well, good to see you Dr. Kelly. You know, um, I've been reading a little bit about your work, uh, really exciting work that was published a few months ago on really, uh, un uh, really uncovering the, the molecular structure of the defect in the BRCA1 gene that is, contributes to inhibiting uh, proteins that actually uh, suppress tumors in breast cancer. That's amazing work. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what the likelihood is or what the pathway might be towards having impact on uh, uh, knocking down this form of cancer? Sure, Tim. So what we recently discovered is that when the BRCA1 protein is mutated uh, in breast cancer, it looks a bit different in that it's modified and tagged by the cells that causes it to be destroyed. What we've been able to do is remove that tag and remove that destructive mechanism such that when we remove the tag, everything looks normal again. And we're hoping with follow-up studies that we're able to prove that in cells now that everything can operate normally again. And this would be really huge if we could translate this down to a new form and a new approach toward preventative medicine and cancer prevention in the long term in the future. Well, thank you, Dr. Kelly. And I noticed this machine in the back uh, of your lab there is very familiar to me. I spent a uh, decade right. driving the Model T version of that earlier in my scientific career. <laughs> so this, this one actually doesn't have knobs on it like mine, but. Uh, Computer right. control, it, I guess. It, it, it's all digitized nowadays, right. as you know. And this is our cryo electron. I, I, would, I would be all thumbs on that one. 
Well, thank you, Dr. Kelly. We'll let you get back to your lab. Thank you. Our Virginia Tech Carilion Health Sciences and Technology Campus in the Roanoke Innovation Corridor will attract talent, resources, and partners from around the world, and it already is, to Roanoke, Virginia. Many of our Blacksburg programs, in fact, nearly every college will have a presence there as well, from veterinary sciences to human nutrition to bio biomedical engineering and more. In July, our independent Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine, led by Cinda Johnson, will become Virginia Tech's ninth college allowing our partnership with Carilion Clinic to graduate to the next level. We are also growing in the national capital region, our urban living laboratory. We have a great opportunity to advance the Virginia Tech vision in the national capital region and a talented team working to make that happen. And they're gonna pop up here in just a moment. There they are, all right. They're there from, uh, I didn't get to see that, so. That's Steve McKnight there, he's our vice president. I think he's making faces behind me or doing something, I don't know, you'll have to, you'll have to watch it later. But uh, thank you, Steve, for all the work that you're doing and everybody there in Arlington. It's a great asset to Virginia Tech and something that's going to grow in the future. So thank you, thanks for joining us. You know, many of our partners are there um, in, in the national capital, capital region, especially in our destination areas. The NCR offers uh, experiential learning opportunities to our students. We plan to see those grow. It also uh, provides exposure to policymakers and ready access to global partners who find it easy to get into the uh, national capital region. So it's just, it's amazing what can happen there. I, I think our vision for the NCR is probably one of the most exciting long-term plays we've got for Virginia Tech. And I'm very thankful that the, the leadership of Virginia Tech over the past 10 or 20 years saw that possibility and planted some seeds so that we're really in a great position to make, take advantage of that. Back in 2014, I talked about the concept of a binary star connecting the Roanoke and New River Valleys with the national capital region. To that end, we've just started operating a door-to-door -door bus service, and we have the expansion of passenger rail, Amtrak uh, passenger rail in our region next month, and that will create another connection. So we're, we're shortening the distance between the NCR and uh, Blacksburg and Roanoke. We also took an important step toward expanding our presence and our impact in the Tidewater region last month when we uh, helped break ground at the Newport News Tech Center Research Park. This park is being developed by Virginia Tech alumnus John Lawson and it's managed by our Corporate Research Center. It puts us in a really important location near Jefferson Labs and many potential partners. Our expansion throughout the Commonwealth is an important step toward the Beyond Boundaries vision, but we must also expand as a global university. This will mean bringing a true global perspective to the university experience empowering our graduates to address the world's greatest challenges, becoming a leading destination for global talent and innovative ideas. Virginia Tech has been a globally engaged university for most of the last century, but becoming a leading global university will require sustained and intentional actions and resources. Our Beyond Boundaries planning over the coming year will take our vision and turn it into action. Although we have much to consider, many of these actions are already apparent and underway. Research is a critical mission of Virginia Tech, and an important part of our vision to become a truly global university. We will continue to enhance the impact of our research through supporting scholarship and by lowering the barriers to global partnerships that amplify or complement our strengths. We'll be recruiting more talent from other countries and cultures and nations and will be make, make our education and research enterprise portable so that our students, faculty, and staff can work and learn from where the action is anywhere in the world. All of this will take resources, but when we are successful, we'll be bringing the best global talent to Virginia. And what better institution to take the lead than the one with, with Prozum as a living motto?
Consider our history as a land-grant university and how Virginia Tech has served the Commonwealth over the years through the Corps of Cadets, agricultural research in every county and city, breakthrough research in science, health, and engineering, and contributions to the arts and humanities. Our vision honors the hard work of all who came before us, and it will become our legacy to the Commonwealth. It makes me proud to be a Hokie. What a great moment to be at Virginia Tech. It's going to be exciting, uh, but it will take all of us working together. So I'm going to leave you today with one final thought. Hokies, it's time to pick up the lunch pail. Thank you again for being here, and ha let's have a great year. Go Hokies! It's a new day at Virginia Tech, fueled by a tradition of hard work and a call to serve as a force for good. We're declaring our role in the world, and we're empowering everyone in our community to find theirs. While our roles differ greatly, the impact of them does not. Get ready. This is Virginia Tech.